Um, lost in Tunisia, you know, that's, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, no, no I mean, they, they did well, they did well. Um, in fact, I'd, I'd, I'd like to put forward the case that Peter's Crouch, Peter's Crouch? Peter Crouch is one of the, <laughs> is one of the best forwards of the modern game. Well, he is, isn't he? He offers something different. You know, and despite people saying he's one dimensional, he isn't. He's not one dimensional. Really, he should have got into the emotional. He has great feet, great feet. Um, there's, uh, in fact, I'm going to, I'm going to have a quick look on YouTube because uh, there's uh, probably a video of him scoring the perfect hat trick against Arsenal while he played for Liverpool, and I'm going to, uh, yeah. I'm going to tweet that from the uh, the winning the toss Twitter, which you can find at twitter.com forward slash winning the toss. Um, yeah. But Peter Craig's brilliant player, brilliant player. Um, I'd rather. Oh, <laughs> Right, the thing that makes me laugh is Jermaine Defoe is only at the Euros because he's small and fast. Yeah, but what's wrong with that? I yeah, mean, you know, yeah, 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 but, yeah, but, yeah, but he's not very good. Like, you know, he hasn't barely, he hasn't really played for Tottenham that much. And he hasn't really done much this, like, last season. It's just, he's no, the, just like, if Darren Bent didn't get injured, he's basically there because Darren Bent got injured. I disagree. Oh, hang on. Where is that? I think I just reloaded Facebook. Oh no, it's open on Super Sounds, so that's fine. Anyway, no, Jermaine Defoe has actually had an excellent season coming off the bench, and I think that's why Roy Hodgson picks it in particular, because to he be has that ability. To be fair, for England, like he does well when he comes on, but the thing I noticed earlier, although I wasn't really paying attention to the game because England have just generally been terribly boring under Roy Hodgson. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I thought Jermaine Defoe was already playing. Then he came on, and I was like, I thought he was already on. So that's probably down to me not paying attention, but at the same time. In fact, I'll tell you what it was. It was down to the fact that he's dyed his hair blonde. Well, yeah. He's dyed his head. He's going, for, he's, go, he's going for the Jibril Cissé. He is. Basically. Yeah. I, should, I should mention that he's actually scored 17 goals and 38 appearances coming off the bench, which is not. That's a pretty good return. Did you say 38 goals and 17 appearances? <laughs> 17 appearances. Oh, 17 goals in 38 appearances. Yeah, I was, was going to say that, that. That would be that would be ridiculous. That's like Lionel Messi that shit. That, that is. That's a, you know that's a goal to game ratio of about one thousand. Um. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Anyway, um, we've got another question from uh, Edge Coulson. Uh, he texted in. He's from Oxford. And he was asking whether the goal line um, technology should be introduced as a result of Michael Vaughan's goal against England against Germany in the 2010 World Cup. I was just like to point out, Michael Vaughan is actually a cricketer, <laughs> not a footballer. Um, so, so, uh, Brian, if you'd like to attempt to answer that question, uh, go ahead. Well, I think uh, Michael Vaughan has been a brilliant captain for England over the years. Um, yeah. You know, the Ashes yeah. series, 2005. Epic. You know, we're talking Michael Vaughan, Simon Jones, Freddie Flintoff. Freddie Flintoff is a brilliant Brit, isn't he? You know, he's he, he sums up you know, you see him on the Morris you see him on the Morrison's adverts and you think yeah, yeah. fantastic. Do you think I think what he is he's he's the cricketing is cricket is cricketing a word? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, of course. He's it's it's nasty. Yeah, he's the cricketing version of Paul Gascoigne. I, I, no, I, I, I agree with that. I, I completely agree. Uh, except Paul Gascoigne is... Oh, I just feel sorry for Paul Gascoigne these days. But uh, let's, let's not be depressed. Let's... Uh, <laughs> you know, if you love rugby, then you'll probably hate this show because it's not about rugby at all. Um, yeah, well, love cricket, like, as Ed Shackleton clearly does, then you'll, you'll also hate the show. Does Ed Shackleton love cricket? Well, no, he doesn't, he doesn't love cricket, and he doesn't love football. Does he live, does he live in Chad? Chadlington? No, he, he, uh, he's, uh, he lives in Oxford. Did he used to live in Chadlington? He did, yeah. Oh, right, yeah, okay. All right, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Chadlington is uh, probably the cricket capital of the, the world. Um, yeah. Well, it's quite a conservative place, isn't it? You know? Yeah. They've won tests so against the likes like of the West people. Indies. I should point out that on Chadlington cricket pitch, I have actually played a five-a-side game of football. Oh, really? Barefoot. Oh, on, the, on the wicket? Yes, yes. That's brave. Precisely. 
Did you not get an yeah. angry groundsman shaking your shaking his fist at you? No, there was no one there. We did it at night. Oh, really? So you didn't get... Uh, I'd like to point out that Chadlington is where David Cameron lives. Um, and you didn't get him yeah. coming out shaking his fist saying, you can't do this, this is a British wicket for a cricket ground. Um, British wicket cricket. Yeah, yeah. So he, he wasn't unhappy. You didn't you didn't go and clear it with him beforehand. Where does George Osborne live? George Oswald, I have no idea. I'm, I'm just, I presume he lives in London, but I don't know. Yeah, but that's what people will presume about David Cameron, but he lives in Chadlington. Does he get yeah. trains from Kingham Station every day? <laughs> Who, David Cameron? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing he would, actually, yeah. Every day? Well, no, no, no. Well, he must have a rail card. Do you think he pays the normal fare? You've got the whole second home thing, though, haven't you? So I don't think he oh, yeah, yeah. all the time. Yeah, that's true, actually. Bloody second. Yeah. Right, anyway, we're getting a bit off topic here. We're going into the sort of... But that, no, but, but, I mean, let's just emphasize, that's okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's 100% you know, toss, isn't it? And 100% football. Exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, um, yeah. Back to the football. Okay, so I've got a, I've got a topic here. Yeah. Um, I've actually just thought of it now. I was just thinking about the 2010 World Cup and the coverage from the BBC. What did you make of Emmanuel Adebayor's performance as a pundit? I thought he was really good. I really enjoyed well, his... Even when, even when his phone went off in the middle of a live broadcast. No, especially when his phone went off. And, uh, yeah, it, was it, was pretty, it was very spontaneous. Yeah, but I kind of think it may have been planned. Ah, oh, I see, yeah. So planned spontaneity. Is that it, not a word? Yeah. <laughs> No, it is. It is now. Right, on winning the toss, we coin phrases every time. Um, plan spontaneity is uh, the new word. Um, it is. But yeah, I kind of think, you know, Gary, Gary Lineker and Alan Hansen and Mark Lawrence are probably backstage going, wouldn't it be really funny if uh, Emmanuel Adebayo's phone went off? Oh yeah, Gary, I think it'd be really funny. And then, oh, God, that was a terrible Scottish accent. Um, but yeah, they, they they probably did it, and then he went on. He's like, "Ooh," and then they're like, "Ooh, this is this is cut. This is bleeding edge." Um, are you on your yeah. phone? Um, I'm, just, I'm actually just looking at my phone because I was thinking about calling uh, one of our uh, listeners, Jeff, who was saying that he was getting him on the show. Oh, oh, oh! Well, that, that's that's good. That's the kind of bleeding edge journalism. So we should, uh, should we give him a call? His name's Leo Swallow. Yep. Yep. Uh, I think he's lost right now. Yeah. So let's give him a call. Maybe he's with um, Ed Shackleton. And maybe he can teach him a thing or two about football. And, and Michael Vaughan. And David Cameron. Um, and David Cameron. Right, so let's, let's give him a call and see if he's there. Okay. Let's put him on speed. And uh, we'll see what happens. This, this is bleeding edge journalism. It's called a question that you like to ask. Oh, hang on, I can't get on again. Uh, just like to, uh... Oh, wait, 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 hello? Hello, right, you're live on radio, on air, on winning the top. You're, you're live. Yeah. You're live. Hi, hi. Hi. Can you, can you just confirm that you can hear him? Can, can you hear me? Leon? <laughs> can, you, can, you, can you hear Rowan? You can't hear him. Hello? Hello? Can you hear him now? Hello? Can you hear him now? You you speak to him. You speak to him. I can hear I can hear him. You speak to him. Okay, so, uh, I'm going to speak to you now. So I, I, I heard that you've got a question for winning the toss that you'd like to put to put towards the viewers. Oh, I'm sure you're left on. So, right, and that question was, who's got the most ridiculous scars in in, a, in world football? Is it A, Frank Ribery, B, Carlos Tevez, or C, Jolien Leston? <laughs> That's a brilliant question. I think I'd have... Is it brilliant? It, 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 no, it really, it really is. I think I'd have to say Jolien Leston because they're more on display than the other two. Um, yeah, you know... Right, when right, you right. look at Frank Ribby, you you look at Frank Ribby, you look 
he looks like he's been in an accident, but Julian Escott just looks awful. <laughs> but well, well, I just want to say, he has actually been in an accident. Yeah, I know, he was in a car accident. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Leon, can you still hear me? Yeah, he can hear you slightly. Okay, um, yeah, I, I'd probably say Julian Lescott, because he looks like he's like an aborted alien. Um, yeah. Um, well, uh, thanks for calling in. Um, I mean, can I just say, at this point, at this point, I, it, for me personally, I would say Frank Rupert. I just think he's... Not, not because he's Muslim. Because he looks like Frankenstein's uh, monster. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> well, that's fine. Um, okay. Brilliant. Well, um, well Leon, thanks for, thanks for calling in. In fact, I called you. You didn't call in at all. But uh, thanks for... Uh, yeah, thanks for interacting with the show. Um, I'm sure I'm sure you will we'll call you again sometime. Okay, bye. That was uh, Leon. Well, that was yeah. Leon Swallow. Thank you. Great question. So, if you want to call in? Feel free. Um, any more questions, Josh? Any more questions? Yeah, unfortunately, not. That's all we've only had. Well, I, I, I've got I've got a couple here. I've got uh, Len from Basingstoke. And uh, yeah, he 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 would say, uh, he's saying, right? He's disappointed that Harry Redknapp hasn't got the England manager's job. He thinks Roy Hodgson is a waste of space, and uh, yeah. he thinks if Harry Redknapp were to go on The Apprentice, he would win. What mm. what do you think about that? Oh, sorry, I was just having a glass of wine, and he repeated the question. Well, a hundred percent, a hundred percent professional. <laughs> 100% toss. We don't, we don't drink on winning the toss. <laughs> I was actually having a glass of um, orange squash. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you'd like to re repeat that question, oh, yeah, yeah, no, uh, 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 Len, uh, Len, 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 Len from Basingstoke, he's a Spurs fan. Hi, um, yeah. He, he, he thinks Roy Hodgson is a waste of space and that Harry Redknapp should have gotten the England job. Um, right. And he, he says that if Roy, uh, Harry Redknapp were to go on The Apprentice, he would mm. win. What What do you think about that? What, what, wait, wait, so, so the situation is that if Roy Hodgson and Harry Redknapp were to go on... No, no, no. no. All right, ima imagine The Apprentice is all 20 football managers in the Premier League. Yeah. And that's that's from the new season, so that includes the likes of Sam Allardyce, um, Brian McDermott, and oh. who else went up? <laughs> I don't remember. Uh. I can't remember. Oh, Paul. No, no, he was he was manager of Norwich. <laughs> <laughs> right, so right. If you'd like to tweet into us who went up from the championship, then we'd uh, we'd be we'd be very. <laughs> this is shocking, <laughs> shocking journalism, <laughs> shocking journalism. I just I just we'd like to get our facts right. I mean, so if we are ever wrong, uh, which we we usually we usually not, wrong, um, please do tweet in or email us or ring us. Um, it's wrong. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to clarify what this is now. Can, can, can you not even remember? It was, it was uh, Reading and West Ham. West Ham won in the playoffs. Uh, Reading went up as yeah. champions, I think. Oh, was it still Steve Coppel? No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. Well, where's the Steve Coppel now? That's, that's, that's an interesting, interesting topic. topic. Oh, Southampton. I've that's just had a message on Facebook saying Southampton from a listener. Um, yeah, we've got we've got at least one listener. It's Southampton, of course. It, it, of course, it's Southampton. <laughs> um, I, I I don't want to I don't want to say names because you know uh, we're anonymous okay, no, here. Okay. The toss, you know? But uh, this is the first of many. You know, every snowball starts. I hope so. I hope so. Sorry. I said I hope so. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it will it will snowball. It will snowball. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, just a second, I think there's a little bit of the tag. What? Is that, uh, is that, there's a little bit of play, that affecting you? Uh, well, no, because I can hear you and you're coming from my speakers, so hopefully it will be recording everything you say. Oh, well, that's okay. Yeah. 